DiscerningHearts.com presents Building a Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essett. Monsignor Essett is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Mother Teresa. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essett encountered St. Padre Pio, who became a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the Pontifical Missions, a Catholic organization established by St. John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, sisters, and seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. What's in your heart today, Monsignor? Well, I certainly... Do not worry. (laughs) I hope you get this message. It is absolutely beautiful. You know, this Isaiah saying that I read today, and and it just came so home to me, uh, the saying of Isaiah 49, does a woman forget her baby at the breast or fail to cherish the child of her womb, yet even if these forget, I will never forget you. And he's saying that to his people. Even if your mother will forget you, I will never forget you. God's care for us is greater than any mother could love a child. And so that care, and I just began going over my days in Beirut. God wants us to put him first. And the story of the gospel today, he is so intent on loving us and caring for us that he wants us to know that I love you. It started my thinking about Mother Teresa. The mother's love for her child just came to me so strongly about God's love. I remember my mother being so worried about me when I was in Lebanon. She, God love her. She was just really terrified that something was going to happen to me. And one day I, I had gone with Michelle Abujaudi up to a, a nursing home in the mountains. I was coming down from the mountain and there were shells kind of bombing all around us. And Michelle had bought a large fish, which he had on ice. And as we were coming down, we stopped at his sister's house. And he woke her up, and it was Christmas. We had had a Christmas mass, and we had just finished mass with the Christmas. And I still heard these Christmas hymns in my mind and heart. And there we were, we went outside. She cooked this beautiful fish for us and some other Lebanese delights. We were there having a meal, two o'clock in the morning, watching the fire, actually fire going from East Beirut to West Beirut. It was Christmas of 1985. And I sat there and I thought, I was in a place where there was a war but there was no worry. And I wrote to him to my mother and said, you know, mom, you have such full of worry. When we don't worry, it's a deeper inner thing that God wants to get at with us. And so I I would like to read Jesus' words. He talks about us being slaves and it's an enslavement. It's very funny. He talks about it as an enslavement of God or money. He puts these two. He's explaining why beatitudes and joy and happiness and peace comes to those who will live the beatitudes, the poor, the persecuted. How can you get into this state? And here's how he tells us in the sixth chapter these 10 verses, 24 to 34. Jesus said to his disciples, 
no one can be the slave of two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or treat the first with respect and the second with scorn. You cannot be the slave both of God and of money. Isn't that a strange thing to oppose God and money? That is why I am telling you not to worry about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to be clothed. Surely life means more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Can any of you, for all his worrying, add one single cubit of his span of life? And why worry about clothing? Think of the flowers growing in the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his regalia was robed like one of these. Did you ever see a, a flower, even the smallest flower in a field, just how pretty it is? Pick it up and look at it. Now, if that is how God clothes the grass in the field, which is then today, which is there today, and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, you men of little faith? So do not worry. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are we to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly Father knows your need for them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness and all these things other things will be given you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. He opposes money and God, and he calls it slavery. And a slave is that which really has the power to control us in every way. What is that that money does to us and with us? What is he talking about? He's talking about reputation. He's talking about possessions. When he talks about flesh, he is, he's talking about the exterior, all those things that we pay attention to and are enslaved by, that we become so enamored of, that control us. If we become enslaved by ourself, me, if I am the first one that is going to control, then it's my appetites, what I eat, what I drink, what I put on, it's me. These things then become that which enslave me. But if it's others that I'm enslaved by, and I can very easily do that, and that's with regard to my reputation, what will people think? And so I'll be completely controlled by what I have as possessions. My house, my car, my job, the way I look the way I appear, becomes completely my obsessions. They completely dominate me. I become enslaved. 
how many of us, it's all the exterior and the interior is so neglected. The inner self, when I am giving way to the development of my heart. And what is that? I become a slave to God. I have faith in him. I have trust in him. I have love for him. I am now under the power of God. And God has made me and commands me and wants me to be completely dependent on him. And so when I am in my inner self, that I develop this, he not only cares what he's saying here for my soul, he is caring also for my body. What I eat and what I drink and what I put on, yes, I love you as a body-soul composite. I just don't love your soul. I love you, and I care for you. And so the beautiful things, for instance, when I would think back was Mother Teresa, when she there in Beirut placed the Blessed Sacrament on the altar, when the president of of Lebanon said, I will give you 10 trucks to get those 53 children. That's what she loved. She loved babies. She wanted to care for them. And so who was she depending on? God. She said, if the war stops tomorrow, will you give me those 10 trucks? She knew what she was dealing with. God. More than the power of war. She placed the blessed sacrament on the altar when he told her, I'll give you those 10 trucks and you could pick up those babies and they'll be there at seven o'clock in the morning for you to do that. She placed the Eucharist on the altar and we all knelt at 10 o'clock at night. Who was she depending on? Who did she believe in? She was a slave of God. God. You have more power than this war. God, I trust you more. And you know the love that you have put in my heart for these children. What was that? A slave of God, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. What was she doing? Trusting God. At four o'clock in the morning, the very next morning, the whole world that had been in war stopped. For some reason, unbeknown to the president, unbeknown to the armies that were fighting, but God stepped in because God is more powerful. If you say to this mountain in prayer, be thrown into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, you are a slave of God, then it will be whatever you ask in prayer. That's what Jesus is saying here. Put first God in your inner self. Here was an example to us so that this slave of God gives us a powerful example of how this unfolds power to bring us an inner peace that we that we need every single day to practice you know the story of the trucks coming and the babies being picked up and the 53 of them being saved is like that is such a that's what the world sees but the inner self if you begin to see today and you hear these words of Jesus, and they can penetrate into your heart, then today, I, in myself, am going to begin to see the secret of this love that being a slave of God has for me. I, everyone who's listening, 
you can either be a slave of God or you're going to be a slave of mammon. And you're going to be controlled by all those things. And so how important it is for us to listen to what God is saying. When you first encounter, do not delay this. Do not put off till tomorrow what we're saying today. And we hear this message. What is most important? Now. Now. Today. Because if you put this off till tomorrow, you're going to continue to be enslaved unless you already are an Abd Allah, a servant of God. Because that's who we are, slaves of God, servants of God. That's what we are called to be. Mother Teresa was, she was a free person. She was free to be freed of the bonds and bondages of this world. Are you enslaved by worry, fear, anxiety, all the kind of nervousness that really dominates and I really believe our American culture as we day after day wake up? What is the first thing that we want to hear Jesus say? not to put off until tomorrow what I can do today. Do not put off till tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. St. Therese said, she's the little flower, when I think about yesterday and when I think about tomorrow, it always fills my heart with fear. And that's so true. When I wake up, every single morning. It doesn't mean that I don't have these anxieties, these fears, and these worries. But when do I first meet them? I meet them when I first get up. Have you ever noticed if you take care of your inner self, not the outer self, don't jump up and just run into the day to take your shower, to shave, and to get ready for the day, to get clothed, and to put on your cologne. That's not the way to get ready for the day. The most important part of what Jesus is saying today is to pay attention to the inner self. When you go where he is, that's where God dwells, not just in your flesh, but in your soul, in your body, in your heart. When you move there, you will see the kind of concerns, fears, anxieties, and worries that came up immediately in your heart. What do I have to do today? Where am I going? What am I doing? The only and first thing I want to do today is what the Father once of me. Every single person. Who are you? Are you first a child of God? I am God's child. We're reminded again of what Isaiah said to his people. Though a mother and father forget her children, I will never forget you, my child. We're going to be dominated and bombarded. What do people think of me today? What are they going to think of me? What is my wife going to think of me? Before your wife, what are my children going to think of me today? It isn't what they think of me. It isn't what others think of me at work. It isn't what others think of me in the neighborhood. Father, what do you want me to do today. The first prayer, hit your knees, bend your knees to God, who is your father. Your heart was kept beating all night. And if he is the one that you are the slave of, turn to him. The very first thing that you get up in your inner self, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done. Where? In me. On earth, as it is in heaven. Whatever your children are doing around your altar and enthroned presence of God in heaven, whatever they are doing, I want to do here on earth. I am your slave. Do with me today whatever you will. As we make that movement toward God, our hearts are going to be filled with his strength. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And O Mary, you're here. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now, today, today I have this and this and this to face. What is it that I'm worried about and concerned about? Give us this day now and pray for us now, right now, Mary, and at the hour of our death. I don't want to postpone your help and my need for that longer than now. And that freedom that we walk through life with as we are slaves of God, not to put off until tomorrow what God wants us to see today. And so today, this whole business of our worrisomeness, our fears, our anxieties, the freedom that God gives us is that inner freedom. When God loves me and looks at me as his own and takes such delight in me, yes, then I am one with his only begotten, because there is only one that he sees and approves. One person came to be just like that, and she was Mary. Mary is the one who can help us and get into that same frame of mind. When she was standing at the foot of the cross, and her son was dying. Her deepest, deepest self, in her deepest, deepest heart, her immaculate heart, was free of worry. It was full of trust. And that was a heart that was so pierced by sorrow and so free of worry. That certainly that heart is being asked of each of today. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and we all have them. We do worry, and we do fear, and we do anxieties, and that's why we're sinners. Pray for us now. And in that now, we can become, we can become like Jesus, free of worry, who is telling us now the perfect and wonderful time that we ask her as at the hour of our death. So if today I can be free of worry, and when my hour of death comes, then I can be for all eternity, because we can be, as Jesus points out today, slaves of God. That's uh, very powerful, Monsignor. I think the things that cause us to worry, they sometimes can come out of the blue. You know, oh, you, yeah. You think you're you're right with God and everything is good, and then all of a sudden <clears throat> something comes along and it just shocks you in those types of moments. That's, that's when we really have to draw upon that faith, that relationship, don't we? I was, I was praying my rosary this morning, and one of the treasures I have in life is my brother. And... The thought came, 
what if you get news today that your brother died? You know, what is there that I have in life that might not be taken from me? And if I can feel experience in my heart that if God says this, I gave this brother as a gift to you for all these years. It didn't cause me as much to worry about the gift of my brother as it did, thank you, thank you. That's what I wound up doing for the gift that is so gifted to me. I don't know a day in life. He and I are Irish twins. He came along a little after a year of my existence in this world. And a pal, a buddy, a gift in life. How did I have him? I didn't do anything to gain him. Who is one of my great supports in life? Who did I assist and he assisted? And all through childhood and life as we went along, just a beautiful gift. Thank you. And so each day we have gifts all around us. And it isn't my brother's gift of his life that enriches my life. It's my gift, my breath. Every day, the beating of my heart that God gives me, and he gives it to me now, and to them and for them that I am filled with gratitude. The, I think today in entering into the now, we enter into as Mary, gratitude. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. A soul that is in touch with the now, a soul that is a slave of God, is filled with peace and gratitude. A soul that is filled with self and filled with others and their concerns is filled with violence and darkness and chaos. God invites us today to be his slave. In God alone is my soul at rest. God bless. Thank you so much, Monsignor. Thank you. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> Senior. God bless. You've been listening to Building a Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essif. To hear and or to download this episode, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will First, pray for our mission, and if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections, with Monsignor John Essef. <laughs>